This is the Goodson Moza Mini S Essential 3-axis uh, foldable smartphone gimbal. Now every gimbal I've reviewed so far has something unique about it. With this one it is folding in half. Uh, if you're here because you just bought a Moza Mini S and want to learn how to make the most out of it or you want to check it out before you buy it or you're looking for a decent pocket friendly 3-axis uh, smartphone gimbal in general, well you're in the right place. I'm going to unbox, test and review each and every aspect of this gimbal and give you sample videos of different recording modes such as motion time lapse, object tracking and inception. So stay tuned till the end and don't miss out on the giveaway announcement in the video. If gadget reviews, DIY projects and life hacks are your thing, then consider subscribing to my booth and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of the action. Welcome back to my booth, Irfan here. It's amazing how affordable technology has become. What was once a tool for the professionals is now the gear of the ordinary. The Goodson Moza Mini S goes uh, for mainly $79 and it is probably the only gimbal that can fold in half and yet it has some amazing functions. So the box itself is smaller than other gimbal packages. You can see all the main features mentioned on the side, foldable design, object tracking, app control, uh, option to switch to portrait mode and one button zoom control. Inside the box we have the gimbal in the folded position, small tripod, a USB-C charging cable, uh, another cable which has a micro USB at one end and a 3.5mm audio jack at the other end. Now apparently this is uh, to connect the gimbal to the phone which is an alternative to Bluetooth connection hence extending battery life, a carrying case for the gimbal and in the paper envelope we have a quick start guide, a detailed user manual along with some Moza brand stickers. The gimbal is definitely a lot more compact than traditional smartphone gimbals. Uh, the length in the folded position is 5.12 inches. There's a lock on the gimbal which has to be released in order to unfold it. When unfolded, it is not any bulkier than most of the other gimbals out there but definitely lighter. It is a couple grams short of half a kg. On the main control panel, we have the joystick, function buttons, a battery indicator, LEDs, power button, charging port and the zoom control buttons. And on the back is a trigger and at the bottom we have a quarter inch screw hole for the tripod. The phone adapter is universal and you can simply pull apart the ends to fit your phone in there. It can support a maximum payload of 260 grams which means basically you can fit any phone in there. For a quick perspective, the Samsung Note 8 is 194 grams and the iPhone XS Max is 208 grams. One thing I already like about it is uh, the way the phone fits in the holder, the ports are not blocked by the roll motor which is usually the case. So you can slide the phone sideways to achieve perfect balance and also charge the phone while on the gimbal from this port on the arm. Essentially, the gimbal also doubles as a power bank. Once the phone is secure, you can power on the gimbal and the phone will jump into action. By default, it is in landscape orientation but you can use it in portrait mode as well by simply rotating the holder. It is very useful if you want to make videos for IGTV or vertical videos in general. It also supports almost all the different shooting modes like tracking, uh, time lapse, etc. in portrait mode, which is not common to all the gimbals out there. Talking about different handling modes, by default, after switching it on, it is in pan follow mode where the tilt and roll motors are locked and the phone only follows when turning sideways. Now, right now, it is panning quite smoothly. But if you press the down button twice, it will activate the sports gear mode wherein it will stiffen up the motors and it will pan rapidly. This mode is useful when you are filming something that is moving quickly or you want to move the camera quickly between two or more subjects uh, that can be people as well, maybe like during a stage show or something. Here is a short example. To return back to the normal follow mode, simply press the same button twice. Now when you press the down button three times, it enters inception mode. In this mode, you can produce a very neat effect by using the joystick to uh, spin the phone and record at the same time. Something like this. Now it doesn't have complete 360 degrees rotation. It maxes out at about 270, which is more than enough to get your head spinning. And if you can combine the inception mode with the auto zoom feature to which I'll come in a moment, it just takes the video to a completely different level. When you press the left button with the M sign two times, it enters the all follow mode where the phone will follow in any direction you turn the gimbal including tilting and rolling. This is great for recording point of view aka POV videos. I tried to do something new combining the slow motion and POV mode. Uh, wasn't completely up to my satisfaction but it didn't turn out that bad.
Now coming to the trigger, you can press it two times quickly anytime to recenter the gimbal. Other than that, you can press it once and hold it that way to activate tilt mode, where the phone will follow you when you tilt and pan but not roll. And finally, you can press it twice and hold it that way to enter locked mode, where all the motors will get locked and the phone orientation will stay the same no matter where you move the handle. You can also use the joystick to move the phone in any direction. It pans a maximum of a little over 180 degrees, which is quite less compared to majority of the mainstream gimbals. Uh, tilt motor also does a little over 180 and uh, the roll motor is a couple degrees shy of 180. One thing I like is that when you try to roll beyond the limit, unlike other gimbals where the phone will be obstructed by the motor, uh, this guy readjusts to allow the phone even if the orientation is being compromised. That way there are no sudden jerks in the video and you can always turn back to the subject. Now we test it. Now my first test for any gimbal is usually a running test where I run with the gimbal and without it and compare the footage to see how stable it is. And here it is. In the test without gimbal I mounted the phone on a simple tripod which also acts like a holder to get a closer comparison. The battery is 2000 mAh which takes 1.5 hours to charge completely, actually a little less, I think uh, an hour 20 minutes, and gives 5 hours of continuous use, which is pretty decent. As you can see, there is a clear difference in the stability of both the videos, the one with the gimbal is way smoother as expected. Now all that I have described so far can be used on the phone's default camera, but to use the other functions like motion time lapse and object tracking and to be able to control the camera from the function buttons on the control panel, we need to connect it to the Moza Genie app which is available on App Store and Google Play for free. And before I forget, the gimbal is uh, completely compatible with iOS and Android and it works normally with both the operating systems. For my testing, I'll be using an iPhone 6 and an iPhone 10. Now simply download the app and launch it and connect it with the phone. Make sure your phone's Bluetooth is on. Remember the 3.5mm audio jack uh, cable I mentioned earlier as an alternate connection to Bluetooth? Not that good. Let's just stick to Bluetooth for now. You can see a bunch of icons on the screen once it is connected. Now you can completely control all that you see on the screen with the buttons on the gimbal handle. Like you can press the camera button to start video recording when in video mode or you can double press the same button to take pictures whether it is in video or picture mode. You can uh, press the up button once to bring up the settings, press it twice to toggle video and picture mode or long press it to toggle front camera. You can also zoom in and out using the zoom buttons on the side uh, and they've uh, added a cool feature where you can press the zoom button twice and it will zoom in to the maximum in a linear fashion. Same with zoom out as well. However, I find it easier to use the icons on the screen as sometimes the buttons are not quite doing what they're supposed to do. For example, when I press the up button once, uh, instead of bringing up the settings menu, it will sometimes open up the media gallery which is supposed to be done by the right button. So I'm just going to continue the rest of the video with the screen icons. Now you can visit your media which you have captured so far in the app from here. The Bluetooth connection status, this is the face and object tracking mode, I'll come to it later. You've got the current recording resolution right here. You can tap on it and select a different one. It will only show resolutions that are native to the phone or at least within the limits of the phone camera. Then we have the flash toggle and uh, current recording mode. Like right now, it is in simple video. There's the front camera toggle next to the record slash shutter button and the settings icon, which also contains the other settings we saw above like resolutions and recording modes. So in camera modes, we have simple pictures. Surprisingly, this one does not have any different or special picture modes like uh, wide angle or uh, 360 or 180 panorama I've seen in other gimbals. Moving on, we have videos and uh, then the interesting video modes uh, starting with slow motion. Again, this is supported if you have slow motion in your phone's default camera. Next is time lapse. You simply start recording and uh, let it record for a good couple of minutes to give you a couple seconds worth of footage. It's nothing unusual, I mean you can do it simply by letting your phone stay on a tripod uh, you know, without any gimbal but my test for a time lapse video on a gimbal is that it stays stable and doesn't drift while recording 
and one thing it is lacking is the ability to control the frame rate in other gimbals which i've reviewed before there were options to select the time interval between frames and determine the resulting video time in this one it uh, has one setting which i can simply explain by saying that if you let it record for 10 minutes it will give you a time lapse video of 40 seconds and yes the phone stays absolutely stable not a single millimeter of deviation here are some samples you can use a simple editing software to speed up or slow down the time lapses further uh, which i've done here because honestly a 40 seconds uh, time lapse can be a bit boring other than the stable time lapse test i wanted to try uh, a new effect which is walking with the gimbal for some time and then you get this amazing uh, time lapse video which is perfectly smooth thanks to the balancing motors and uh, which you cannot achieve with just a simple phone holder. Next mode is the advanced time lapse, uh, basically motion time lapse. This one thankfully has a lot more controls. You can select a starting point by tapping on the screen or pressing the camera button on the gimbal handle. Uh, then move the gimbal with a joystick and select an ending position and then press the next step. By the way, you can select more than two waypoints, but I'm just uh, showing this for demo purposes. In the next screen, you can select the shutter interval and the total duration for which it will record and move between those waypoints. Press start and it will move to the starting position and do its work. It still doesn't show how long the resulting video will be, but you can calculate it yourself. This is one of my favorite all-time recording modes because it naturally has a cinematic effect no matter where you record. Of course, the preferred way is to do it outdoors like landscapes or highways and stuff like that. And if you're lucky to have clouds on that day, it just makes it even more mind-blowing. Alright, now we are done with the shooting modes, so let's have a brief look at the remaining settings before moving to the object tracking. We have the video resolutions which we saw earlier, next is flash, then anti-shake, I don't know what it's supposed to do, I mean I tried recording videos with and without it and couldn't make out a difference. Next is a manual mode where you can control the settings like exposure, white balance, uh, etc. manually. Then is the frames, basically aspect ratios, filters including beauty, halo, all the generic ones. Zebra pattern, reference grids, uh, gradient meter, sound meter, it shows the level of sound in the video while recording, allow Bluetooth, microphone, live streaming, and finally reset to default settings. Now, there are so many options uh, that I can't dive into all of them in detail or it will turn out to be a super long video. So if you have any questions about any specific feature, put them down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them one by one. Uh, coming to object tracking, you can press this icon and then highlight anything you want to track. It can be a face, a person, a car, basically anything that has a clear definition on the screen. And then it will start following it. It can be done with the rear and front camera. And it is also possible in the slow motion and time lapse mode, which makes it all the way more interesting because it is not that common. And let me tell you about the tracking. It is fantastic, spot on super accurate very fluent and unless you are deliberately trying to get out of the frame by moving too fast it will not give up it follows quickly and keeps the object centered you can set it down to record a moving object slash person or you can move around and let it track a stationary object like this i set a traffic cone and decided to uh, go around it with the tracking on the gimbal simply stayed locked on the cone and wouldn't give up uh, so 10 out of 10 for tracking and finally you see this gimbal icon here you can tap on it to adjust the zoom speed settings and calibration the joystick has a super neat feature where it will respond differently when you move it let me show you if you move it slightly towards the left the phone will start moving slowly but if you move the joystick all the way the phone will move swiftly again not there in other gimbals all right, guys, that is pretty much all about it. I kind of like this one. Build quality is good. Design is unique, foldable, lightweight, portable. Rotations are kind of limited to 180, which is not great. But what it can do, it does in a smooth way. Interesting functions like motion time lapse, inception mode, object tracking in all the recording modes, uh, portrait and landscape orientation, and dozens of other features. And it doubles as a power bank, and the price is only $79. Great tool for anyone with a knack for content creation. I'll leave a link in the description box below in case you want to check it out. Oh, and by the way, the giveaway is still on. I'm giving away a pair of Juxi Jam Sports X1 Sports wireless earbuds on my Instagram page. So make sure you follow the link in the description box below to go there and follow the steps to take part in the giveaway. The winner will be announced in the next four days. 
so make sure you check it out that's it for now guys if you enjoyed this video please hit that like button below and while you're there don't forget to subscribe to my booth for more gadget reviews life hacks and facts you can also follow me on instagram facebook twitter and instructables all the links are in the description box below click on the thumbnails to watch my other videos or check out my youtube channel for more and as always thanks for watching